A warning about dihydrogen monoxide. It's colorless, odorless, inhalation may be deadly. Prolonged exposure to solid state DHMO may damage skin and organs. Oh, okay, it's just water. The mysterious liquid that all living things rely on. We drink it, we put it on our crops, we watch people jump into it as a sport. But how much do we really know about this substance? Our planet is called the blue planet because it has water and lots of it. 71% of our total surface is covered in water, but if we were to collect it and put all that water into a single space, it looked like this. That doesn't seem like a lot. To be honest, it's not. The majority of Earth's water, about 97% is salt water. We can't drink that or use it on our farm, so we're limited to that 2.5% of fresh water. But even that, of all the fresh water on the planet, about 70% is locked away in glaciers and ice caps. What we're limited to is that small fraction of water that's stored underground in aquifers and surface waters like lakes and rivers. But even the availability of surface water is difficult because the majority of that is locked away in permafrost frozen in soils. Usable water in the world is scarce. So how we use it matters. And the conservation of it is becoming of a growing importance, especially with the increasing population is increasing the demand for clean water. The majority of water use comes from agriculture for watering our crops and for livestock. The next largest use is in power plants. The public supply refers to water that we may not be directly responsible for, like firefighting or street cleaning or the water that we use in parks and swimming pools. The water use we are responsible for is the household use, which is our drinking water and what we use for hygiene. Industrial water use is the water that is used for the processing, fabrication, cleaning, and cooling of the goods we purchase. How that water is used is different in every state. Here we see the total water use in the United States, scaled per state. The eastern half of the United States uses a lot of water for power generation, while the western half of the United States uses a majority of its water for the irrigation of crops. The majority of water used in the east comes from surface waters like lakes and rivers. But in the western United States and the central United States, the majority of it comes from groundwater. Now we get to this by building wells, but we have a concern with it. See, groundwater can be recharged as rain falls and infiltrates and percolates back into groundwater sources, but right now, we're extracting water faster from the ground than it is being recharged. For one, that's unsustainable. The Agalala Aquifer, which provides the vast majority of water in the central United States, has dropped by more than 150 feet worth of water in some places. The aquifers below Mexico City is being depleted so quickly that Mexico City is sinking. Now, that animation is a little exaggerated, but we can visibly see buildings sinking down. Now, we do have some solutions to this water crisis. One method is to desalinate or remove the salt from ocean water to make it drinkable and usable for crops. This process involves using reverse osmosis, which pushes water through a membrane that is permeable to water, but not to salt. Well, the issue here is that all that salt must be disposed of in some way, and most of the time it gets discharged back into the ocean. Even saltwater fish have a tolerance to salinity, and if it gets too high, they may not be able to survive near the discharge area. Another point, the salt water is denser, which makes it sink to the lower parts of the ocean. The global flow of ocean water, this circulation pattern we, we see on this map, are already changing as a result of ice melt from the Arctic due to global warming. A change in the flow of this ocean water 
can affect how storms form. It can affect the economy. I mean, especially in places where fishing is a major industry and alter the food webs in ocean ecosystems. Right now, desalination doesn't contribute greatly to the changing ocean circulations, but an increasing demand for water may increase the use of desalination and add to this change. At the end of the day, the best thing we can do is conserve the water resources we already have. Use less water at home by fixing leaks, taking shorter showers, and only using washers if you have a full load. While this seems small, by using water-saving features like those, you can reduce your in-home water use by up to 35%. This means the average household, which uses about 13,000 gallons per year, could save 44,000 gallons of water. In agriculture, we can use more efficient watering systems like drip irrigation, which reduces a farm's water use by up to 60%. And even more so, it can actually increase crop yields by 90%. All the water we use is inherently linked by the hydrological cycle that we covered before, but there's a bit more to it. We all live in a watershed. A watershed is a land area that channels rainfall and snow into creeks, streams, rivers, and eventually they outflow into a large body of water, usually an ocean. But all the parts of a watershed are connected in some way. Runoff from farms can make it to a river and then pollute the ocean hundreds of miles away. In the same way, runoff of pollutants from the city can also make its way downstream. Damming a river can cause less water to flow downstream and potentially create flooding problems upstream. Let's take a look at a real example. The Mississippi watershed is one of the largest in the United States. It contains many smaller watersheds within it that all eventually flow into the Mississippi River the urban centers of Chicago, even St. Louis, the agriculture centers of Iowa and Kansas can all affect the water quality flow and the environments that are downstream from them. All of these issues come together and have decimated the ecosystems in the Gulf of Mexico where the Mississippi River exits. All the excess nutrients from fertilizer runoff has led to algal blooms that can create dead zones. See, algae would use up all the nutrients in the water and their populations would skyrocket. Well, eventually they deplete all those nutrients and then die off. The bacteria that decompose them use up all the oxygen in the water. And by using up all the oxygen, a lot of the fish either get out of the area or they die. The entire world is connected in more way than one. If we are to preserve it, and its resources, we must use them sustainably and responsibly. While much of this is out of the direct control of us, like industry and agriculture, we can force companies to be more sustainable by increasing the demand for products that are made sustainably. We can make an appreciable change by doing our part too. We are all in this together.